Hello everyone, and welcome to my young and restless gossip channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Victoria and Cole discover a clue to Claire's location, and Michael confronts Victor about Jordan. An agitated Chelsea arrives to Adam's apartment. They both received a message stating that Connor wanted to chat with them. She believes this is a significant step, but they should not overstate its importance. She accuses him of inflating things and warns them to step carefully because there is so much at risk. When he begins to set up the video call, she stops him so they can go over the parameters. She adds that the doctor suggests they should avoid reassurances and shouts at him when he gets upset at hearing this so many times previously. They argue, but she insists on working together. Chelsea claims that rage is his protective mechanism, whereas hers is quiet panic. He assures her that they have the regulations in place to handle this, and they sit down to make the call. When it begins, they tell their son how happy they are to see him and inquire whether he has made any friends. Connor shrugs and doesn't know what to say. Adam continues to ask questions until Chelsea interrupts and advises their son to take his time and tell them what he wants at his own speed. He tells how the main doctor perceives his mood and disassociations. The doctor informs him that when he becomes overwhelmed, his brain responds, nope. They are teaching him how to slow down and be more gentle with himself. His mother tells him that her thoughts speeds ahead of her and that she must stay in the present moment. Adam asks whether it is acceptable to check out, but his kid snaps and screams no. That would imply treating the OCD as normal. Connor has resumed playing soccer and acquired a new friend. His parents express their affection for him and promise to accept signals from him and the physicians. Their son has to leave for class, so the call stops. Adam and Chelsea made a video call. Connor Y and R. Chelsea informs Adam that she will have to email the doctor for some clarifications. She notices Adam contemplating and urges him to stop. It will not help. He's not sure if this is really benefiting their youngster. He also experienced disassociation as a child. He shut out the death of a man he believed he had slain. Adam is concerned that his son will end up like him, failing to fit in and unable to think he is worthy of affection. Chelsea orders him to stop. They don't understand the illness, so they must be calm and prepared for what may happen. He reminds her that they have passed on all they are to their son which terrifies the hell out of him. It must be gnawing at her insides. More, Marla Adams passes away. She begins to pace and confesses that it is affecting her, but she refuses to let it overtake her. He encourages her to avoid using jargon and depending on to-do lists. Can't she simply tell him how she truly feels? Who else would comprehend that besides him? She throws up her arms, admitting that she is scared of falling into the well of shame and guilt and being unable to crawl out. Of course, she blames and despises herself for not being able to prevent this. He is aware that he was absent for a significant portion of their son's existence and that he has caused havoc. Sitting down, she explains that their son is coping with something different. Even if they don't grasp it, they feel entirely accountable. Does it matter if they did not cause it? Their son is still suffering. He only wants to convince his son that he will have a typical, boring existence, but promising him that everything will be fine is simply wishful thinking. She's certain he doesn't want to hear it. Adam might use some reassurance. She sighs and acknowledges she could too. He proposes that when things grow scary, they should reassure one another. She'd really like that. Chelsea and Adam address their difficulties. YNR. After they have taken a deep breath and drank some water, they discuss how amazing their child is. She's pleased they can unload and be there for one another. It's fantastic that they can finally communicate as adults and friends. She warns that this is only the beginning. Their son will experience ups and downs, as will they. They reassure each other that they aren't leaving, and he holds her. Nikki embraces Jack as she enters the Abbot Mance. They talk about Harrison returning home safely. He informs her that his great-grandson has been discussing the witch and inquires about Claire's current status. 
She explains that they received a call that could have been from Claire, but they are unsure. She's in agony at the possibility that she was involved in this. She is confident that Victoria wishes her mother could be more helpful right now. Nikki is concerned that she is viewed as a fragile flower, and she despises her vulnerability. Jack assures her that she has survived things that would kill most people. She admits that she can take the stress, but the guilt gets to her. A.D. Nikki tells Jack that she feels guilty. Y.N.R. Summer walks in as Nikki screams that this kidnapping would not have happened without her. Her granddaughter seeks an explanation. Jack instantly defends his friend, but Nikki speaks out, explaining that it is her responsibility Jordan is still alive. Claire wanted to let her die, but she persisted on sparing her life. That surprises Summer. Nikki adds that she suspected Claire was also engaged in the kidnapping, but she turned out to be a victim. Her granddaughter still doesn't understand why she protected Jordan, so Nikki explains that allowing her to leave on her own terms would have meant letting her win. If anyone is to blame for this, it is she. You have every reason to hate me for this, Nikki says. Summer's face shrinks into a pout. Jack is certain that Summer holds Jordan responsible and attempts to lead Nikki to a meeting. She claims she has a meeting with Lauren. That helps her stop thinking since she needs to focus on something else. Turning back to Summer, she says it's fine to blame her. Summer agrees with Jack and holds Jordan solely responsible. Her grandmother praises her and begs her to embrace Harrison for her before leaving. More, YNR column complains over this week's happenings. After checking on Harrison, Summer returns and explains that he's a little more clingy than usual, but she assured him they could do all his favorite things today, which made him happy. Jack inquires about her feelings on Nikki's decision to let Jordan live. She claims her son may be scarred for life. When her grandmother accuses her of being to blame, she is at a loss for words. It may make her a terrible person, but she wishes Nikki had let Jordan to die. Jack will not discuss it, but he urges her not to inform her grandma while she is in such a frail situation. Summer hadn't planned to say anything. She will always love her grandmother and wish she had let Jordan die when she had the chance. Lauren meets Nikki on the patio at Crimson Lights. She is aware that the past several days have been terrible. Nikki keeps trying to wake up from this. Then everything will be normal, and Claire will be safe. Her friend tells her she deserves some normalcy and encourages her to rest. The Newman reveals that she badly needs to sleep, so they decide to cancel this meeting. When Lauren offers to phone Victor for her, Nikki says she doesn't want to disturb him right now. They stand up and embrace, with Lauren asking her to swear to go straight home. Where else would I go? inquires Nikki. A.D. Nikki hugs Lauren Y.N.R. Nikki enters an athletic club suite with only a bottle of vodka. She hastily twists the cap and gulps. Nikki is drinking in sweet Y.N.R. At the ranch, Michael questions Victoria and Cole about the call they believe Claire made. She explains that it was muffled, but she knows it was her. We have to do something, she says. Michael tells them that he has defended Claire but she has spent her entire life following Jordan's orders. The call could have been part of a strategy. When he argues that this could be a conspiracy, Claire's parents are furious until he backs down. The lawyer apologizes, and Victor tells everyone to calm down. His daughter reminds him that the one person who could tell them where Claire is has died. Michael pays close attention to Victor as he explains that Jordan is precisely where she should be, and they will not give up. Victoria is tired of waiting for the phone to ring. They want to visit the motel where Jordan was locked up. Her father tells them to do what they need to do and that he will make sure no one interferes.